Hello, uh, thank you, Georg, for the uh, nice introduction. Um, yes, I'll jump right into it. Or actually, I won't jump right into it because I want to start with a short video sample, which I want to play kind of as a as an opening clip, as a welcoming and introductory sample, so to say. So before we start with the um, talk, which I entitled Flexible Control, Here's an intro clip. Turn head to the left. Introduce variation to your position. Smile. Showing first and left. I know, it does not look like much, yet. The more we scan, the deeper the result. All right, that was um, my jumping into the topic, as it already illustrates a few things or exemplifies a few things that I want to talk about today. And aside from that, Zirom from the Ensemble Resonance can smile much more beautifully than I can as an introduction. So um, again, welcome um, and uh, thanks for being here. I want to talk about um, notation or score concepts within my pieces, which is actually slightly different um, than how I normally or often talk about my work, where I rather um, focus on certain topics or concepts and this time I really want to look how um, the score is being used or the um, the kind of the structuring of the piece and I um, also actually call those systems and settings but I'll talk about that in a moment so what I want um, what this um, keynote is about is will not be so much about like fancy scores and um, beautifully um, shaped black pages of um, complex contemporary notation, but I rather want to talk about the how I how I use the score as a tool and how this kind of jumps back and forth between control and freedom and it's kind of I suppose. Um, Kind of grounded for one also in the way uh, in my personal background kind of jumping between um, being an improviser and an excessive person and being a rational programmer on the other side and also maybe between the um, the musical styles that i came from so this is kind of maybe why it's um, um, how it's also grounded in my like in my um, personality but more importantly it's um I like to like to um, see the score kind of as a system that facilitates as a tool forms of empowerment, synchronization, and control hierarchies. So those are different, and those are actually also going to be the different steps within um, within this presentation. And I like to see the score not just so much as a um, as a sheet of music or a PDF of music or something else like this that kind of um, notates pitches and um and other musical parameters but i um like to see it kind of as a as a tool that can enable scenarios or kind of experimental settings so to understand the score rather as a as a rule system as a system where whomever creates certain logics certain rules certain things that people, performers, audience, musicians kind of have to well relate to in some way. So either follow the rules or not follow the rules. And 
I see it in like in two major branches and how this um, this can happen. For one is to organize connections, connections between, let's say, icons, symbols, entities um, in that system, and how the how this is being executed by a human, by a performer, or by the audience. And the other thing is structuring temporal events. So um, kind of two um, this. This idea of this, yeah, this thinking of the score kind of as an as an um, organizing system in kind of two different branches, and um, that will then also deal with the topic who controls whom. So if we think of the score as a as a setting that enables different forms of control, uh, then the question is who is in charge. The composer, the audience, the performer, the conductor, and how, and of course, this, these relationships can change. They will change between all the different pieces I'll be showing, but they can also change within the um, within the pieces itself. So the, I guess, one of the main things I'm really interested in is the friction between the human and the score system. And we can also describe that in a bit broader sense. And human can be the performer, the musician, but can be the spectator, can be um, the audience member. And score system, in a way, maybe that already becomes clear slightly, is I um, like to treat it as a metaphor also for technology or for technology-mediated systems. And in that hope to see also a, um, a parallel to processes or to phenomena that are not strictly um, music inherent, but that could maybe also be applied to more general um, social um, scenarios. All right, so I want to talk about four um, different, um, different specific ways of um, illustrating what, I'm, what I tried to already summarize briefly for you. And um, I will not be presenting whole pieces like in depth, but I'm, also, I'm only going to show, show tiny excerpts of pieces or scores that I've done. So I'm not trying to give you a, um, a deep um, insight into um, individual works of mine, but I rather use my own work just as small examples to, <laughs> to bring across the, the point that I'm trying to make. So. The four subchapters I want um, I've prepared for you is um, link systems, kind of how how to structure time and events. The second one is collaborative systems, how people can work on something together within a given framework. Synchronization systems, systems that allow for the synchronizing between different individuals. And then, um, as the last one, control systems, where it really deals with forms of hierarchy, control, and rule following. And then, in the end, I'll um, try to sum up everything that I said. All right, let's jump into the link systems, the first part. They actually start from slightly more conventional um, um, scores and um, pieces. So um, I've done a few pieces that are realized with graphic scores. Um, I'm not going to go into detail for that because that is something that a lot of people have been doing. But maybe, it, um, so the the kinds of pieces I'm talking about in my case are sensor and movement-based pieces where graphical notation is used to um, facilitate also a a gestural control of the performer to kind of shape both time parameters of electronics and so on. So um, it's a it's a form of kind of, of empowerment in a way. It gives actually all the control in the hands of the performer. This is a bit where I came from with my um, um, hugely inspired also by kind of like intuitive free jazz playing. So um, this is one part, and um, we can listen to a tiny excerpt. Yeah. 
So uh, that was the PCI Fox Dirty Gold, and it's um, it's a graphically notated um, piece that allows for a um, strong control and sort of um, empowering um, control of the electronics um, for the performer. The next um, subsection I would want to uh, would like to go to are Q based scores, also that. Um, is not um, that is something that exists outside of my work as well too. Um, here we see a, um, a section of the um, of the score for the piece point ones, where we can see that the um, that the score is divided into those um, with those solid um, lines. So and each of those um, blocks, so to say, that is that happens between the um, the solid lines works kind of as one function, uh, or as one container, or as one object. And the gestural movement of the conductor, in this sense, uh, in this case, means going from one of these brackets, or one of these containers, to the next one, so to say. So in this case, we have something, um, there's one, uh, one more, um, uh, one more subject in the equation, so to say. Um, that's the conductor, and the conductor in this case now is controlling the electronics and, if you want, controlling the ensemble at the same time. So it's, first off, also allows a kind of intuitive and expressive jumping back and forth between control of electronics and, um, and mediating um, information to human players. And we can see a very short excerpt of how this um, can be achieved. Um, so, yeah, um, hopefully this short clip shows this kind of jumping back and forth between um, communication with the computer and communication with the um, human ensemble, in this case, uh, decoder ensemble and Leopold Hort conducting. And um, one thing that also starts to appear is this kind of, um, that also the musical material has this kind of gestural quality and is, is kind of thought of as as, as entities that are kind of being, that are triggered in place. That's going to be a reoccurring theme um, as we go along. All right, so this is kind of the, um, a starting point here. And now we can um, take a look uh, one step further um, in the piece, um, like after two thirds or so of the piece, a part comes where the kind of the communication between the conductor and the ensemble and the computer, so if we think of those three um, elements, becomes a bit more, um, well, less straightforward, let's say. Um, we can take a short look into this and uh, then I'll say a few words about it. This, in this case, was uh, Nada Ensemble with uh, Dan Janssen conducting. And here we see uh, that the, well, two things happen. For one, um, the, the movement of the conductor um, is kind of triggering these, um, these empty playing um, gestures by the musicians. And in the electronics, there's this kind of error sounds, which um, then slowly, um, is also subject to um, to a latency, so there's a there's an increasing offset in the triggered sound. So um, in this case, um, there's one part that I'm often kind of uh, that I'm often fascinated by or like to go into is this kind of dissociation 
between um, the elements. So here we kind of feel that it kind of dissolves from one another and a um, firstly very strong um, created connection or linkage is kind of um, is breaking apart in a way. So um, it's the the question who now controls whom um, becomes less clear in a way. It's a um, the the rule of the system um, kind of becomes um, starts to become the subject um, of the piece, and that is something that I'm um, often um, working on. And that is this kind of a, a shift in perception where we where I first try to create a, a setting, a scenario, or um, yeah, a, an experimental setup in the later cases, and to create a logic that is for first. Um, kind of well understood and also um, accepted in a way and to then kind of play with the parameters of that um, um, of these rules will then um, direct the attention um, away from the kind of illusion but onto the um, onto the construction mechanisms itself all right um, a third part within this kind of linkage structuring section is the uh, our icon based scores. Um, that is something that I've been using for several pieces um, for uh, various reasons. Um, <clears throat> so here we can see that's an excerpt of the piece F1. And here we see a collection of icons that happen within that piece. So um, I've been writing a few scores that don't notate specifically um, pitch material and things like this, but rather have those icons. So it's more like containers that or entities um, within the score that are to be filled with movement and with um, sound actions by the ensemble. So it kind of creates this, um, again, a link between something that is proclaimed and something that is executed on, on the stage. And um, it's, it creates kind of a logic, and a logic then also um, creates anticipation. And we also, in, again, in this case, um, accept these kind of rules or these, um, these um, well, yeah, the, those linkages. And um, it's then, for me, interesting to kind of start playing with those. So I've done that in the pieces Hello and F1, and Star Me Kitten, and I'm gonna play to you a very short excerpt of the piece Star Me Kitten because it's very notation based. This is cutting, erasing, rising, working, loving, hammer, loving, keys, door, glass, step, phone. All right, it's a uh, very short excerpt. And so this piece kind of starts in a way a bit like I'm talking to you right now. It's a, it's, it starts as a kind of um, musicologist um, presentation that introduces a certain set of, um, of icons and establishes a sonic equivalent to those in a very abstract way. As the piece then goes on, those icons and those sounds associated with it are kind of being re, um, reshaped into different contexts and into different settings. So they, there's in the middle, there's kind of a break. And from that point on, the, the, the kind of the clean surface of a musicologist description vanishes and it dives into a more subconscious world where then those icons are being, um, are being put into a new into a new context, and the the euphoria created um, clean sonic material is um, is then kind of interwoven into into something into something completely new. It's the yeah, it would take too long to um, to show this complete development. I can at this point say all those pieces. Whoever is interested are also all uh, online in its entirety. All right. Um, so one um, other part that I wanted to talk about um, 
notation wise in the kind of structuring part is the notation of movement and gesture which i have done for several pieces that um, makes or allows the musicians and performers within pieces to execute certain movements to navigate through um, the stage and to kind of synchronize those things with light so um, here's a an excerpt of the piece uh, sunset focus here's an excerpt of the piece um, um, Kodak Era, and so both pieces work with light that are being simultaneously controlled through a score, and both pieces are kind of highly synchronized um, movement and gestures um, of the performers. I show a very short excerpt, and then I'll say a few words more about this. Um, so here in a way the um, the piece or the setup of the piece kind of video samples or samples the the players on stage it's kind of a it uses light to 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 achieve kind of a visual sampling of an continuous analog um, performance on stage and through that kind of putting it into a um, sort of clip representation if you want so you kind of have like a blank like a black or blank canvas with um, those the, um, the humans kind of appearing and disappearing kind of like a sample being turned on and off and um, so it's again already has this kind of um, notion to it that a system kind of de um, um, erases the um, the continuity of the players and rather transforms them into something fairly well machine like or kind of um, digital file like if you want and um, the um, this idea is, um, has been um, taken further oh I see here's a slight um, cut off um, uh, this idea I took a bit further for the piece Codec Error, which does something similar, and I won't go into um, too um, much detail within it. Um, but the what the, the the part I would like to talk about to you is um, how within that piece we again have a score that kind of controls the movement, the positions of the players on stage and also the gestural movement and so on so it's a it's a setting that at first has a very kind of um, intense appearance of the of the performers it's a black stage with heavy sound and heavy light um like happening and it's a kind of very in your face aesthetic if you want and um Within the piece, then there's a certain point where kind of the setup breaks, if you want. And from that moment on, nothing happens in the dark anymore. But from that moment on, everything happens within the light, mostly. And you kind of you start seeing all the um, the hidden material, the um, the microphones and the in-ear click receivers and all those kinds of things. And as a last step, it also exposes um, the the click track and the announcements that the performers are listening to. So there's kind of an inversion point within the piece where all the internal information that is being used to structure the piece, to organize um, everything, and to make the performers do what they are doing, all those things at a certain point are being exposed and put into the open. And Let's take a um, short listen and look into that, and then I'll say one or two more sentences about that. Move head to the side in three, two, one, now. 
Take one step backwards. Now. Lights off in three, two, one. Now. In the next noise block, the light will go out. In the dark, you will lie on the floor. By this, finishing the piece. When the light goes on again, five seconds later, the piece is over. Alright, um, so, <clears throat> like I said, there's kind of, um, there's this kind of inversion point within the piece where the attention is being pulled away from the um, phenomenon that is happening on the stage, a kind of a um, sort of um, functioning magical black box that works, but we then, we then see how how the piece is actually realized. And it also makes us reconsider the role of the performers on the stage, which um, up to that point kind of had, a, let's say, a fairly dominant and uh, in charge um, feel to them. And, or a kind of an overpowering um, attitude in a way. And from that moment on, it's actually the look on them it has a more, um, they're more like puppets, or they're kind of rather executing and following a, um, a given system. So it's this kind of um, redirecting um, the attention also. And um, it's also a question of agency in a way, like who, um, what, the, what the role of the performer within that setting is. And so that is kind of the first um, subchapter, first subchapter I wanted to talk about kind of from um, structuring and linking um, ideas within um, score designs that I have done. And we can see maybe already a few arcs within that. One is to from a kind of empowering, sort of very freely organized thing to a maybe slightly more critical and um, less free but more already controlling um, fashion within uh, um, within the design of those pieces. So to a few of those aspects, we'll be coming back again as well. Now I want to show a maybe slightly um, less critical, more positive um, counter example um, of two pieces that I've, um, that I've realized that still share um, similar ideas. And um, those are collaborative pieces. One um, is called Vicky Piano and the other one is called Silent Post. Both are pieces that are um, being, to a, a huge degree, developed in, um, in bigger communities online and um, have then a kind of physical um, execution in the concert hall. So I'll very quickly talk about wikipiano.net. Um, that piece is a, it's a solo piano piece and um, the score for that piece is a website with the same name. And this website can be edited by everybody at any time, always. And it's um, constructed out of several um, components, which let you either write normal music that lets you um, embed videos or sounds or images and you can draw things and think um, a lot of different things the piece started kind of with a um, with a um, blank um, starting point and then over the time i kind of lost track but it says somewhere in the statistics something i guess like 15 or twenty thousand edits have been made on that piece so it has been constantly changing and evolving all the time and Whenever the piece is actually then being performed, the, the performer, the pianist, goes on stage, opens a laptop, and performs the piece from the page from top to bottom. And then there's, you open a sec, everything is done in a browser. The second um, part, the uh, second browser window is opened that is put on the projection to show the videos and all the media content in a way. So 
Um, we can take a quick look at some of the modules on that page. I just quickly scroll through. So <clears throat> we can see there's like a lot of different um, content in it. And it kind of goes back again to this idea of flexible control. So it's in one, it is it has a very strict format, which is a, um, a collection of blocks, but these blocks can be filled by the um, by everybody at any time. So it obviously um, questions um, authorship and um, and also copyright and legal issues um, with um, within that um, range as well. Um, and it sort of has a kind of um, democratizing um, aspect to it because it lets everybody participate who would like to. And actually also everybody can perform the piece whenever she or he wants to by just using a laptop and um, an internet connection anywhere. So the, um, the barrier is very low to participate and there's, um, there are a lot of things that could be said about the piece. Um, it's, it's, it's a bit of a um, topic of its own, but I would like to talk um, maybe mostly about some aspects that fall within um, the, the topic um, of today's um, um, presentation. And that is the kind of, um, that who is in control of it. And there was one remarkable um, saying that one of the pianists who performed the piece at one point said that he kind of felt like a gladiator having to execute what all those people at their computer told him to do because the piece is not just playing it's also making movements making gestures and some of so and there's also explicit content and things like this so it's really challenging in a way so it's um here it puts the audience really in a way in a, in a position to control what the what the performer has to do and for ex me as a composer i'm fairly much out of the equation it's a that's a topic of its own how much i'm still in there um but what i what i like is or what i would like to stress here is this kind of the relation between um who's in charge and who kind of executes Another piece that falls uh, into these kind of collaborative works um, is the is a container of pieces called Silent Posts, and I gave that the um, the name repository um, pieces or repository scores. It works in a way that it has kind of a starting score with material, and then everybody can also again take that score and take the associated media material and create a new version based on it. And all of that is then kind of checked in back into this repository system and accessible to everybody who wants to work further with it. So due to that, there are like, um, there's kind of evolving versions of, of pieces. Um, again, that also, there are a lot of examples and, um, pieces one could now look at. I'm sorry that I'm kind of just uh, bursting through everything. I just rather would like to give you the the idea behind it. Um, I hope you're not too disappointed that the kind of more <laughs> musical examples are coming a bit short in this moment. But um, so what I um, what I like here is that it's um, it has it has this aspect of versioning. So it's kind of a constant evolvement and it's, um, it has this, it again makes use of a, um, of this, um, communal or, co um, like internet community, um, 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 well, actions in a way. So it's, it's both Wiki Piano and Silent Post really in the way that the, also the way you then perceive the pieces, they're kind of, it is as if you're taking something from the internet and throwing it onto the concert stage if you want. So if you watch, for example, wikipiano.net, it kind of feels like browsing through 
through your timeline on a social on your uh, on your social network, for example. And it's it's not just that it's not just the content of it that is in there, but it is, it's also the the driving forces. So this kind of what I already mentioned is versioning or this kind of iteration of things. So somebody does something then that starts to become a joke for somebody else who references it and turns it into something else. And so, like, I would say these kind of internet phenomena are some are on the surface, but some are in the form of interaction and kind of community um, um, relations um, have also a, a deeper kind of um, driving force. and. That is, again, also related to a re recurring um, topic that is this kind of thinking also of media or as sonic actions or of, of gestural actions as kind of entities or objects. So that is something that I'm kind of coming back to um, a lot of the time for several reasons. For I guess one of them is this kind of the question of how a thing is related to meaning or how one um, cause is linked to an effect and um, but it also has this it also has this it's equivalent in the digital world maybe so thinking of kind of a, as a file as an as a as a media object that is being um, placed and being combined or being repeated or being put in a certain point so some a lot of these pieces actually also uh, I, I guess originates from a kind of thinking that maybe also um, has to do with me thinking of staged um, performances through the eyes or through a perspective that is kind of looks at it as kind of digital objects in a way. So it enforces a a way of thinking that um, that um, that thinks about these kind of media objects, if you want. All right, so. Um, Let's hurry on to the uh, third of four chapters, and that is synchronization systems. Now it's going to get uh, even more rigid and even less um, classical or contemporary music. So <clears throat> I already mentioned that very briefly at the beginning. One thing I'm really intrigued by, especially in the, um, in the last few years, is thinking of a score kind of as a facilitator for an experimental setup. So to think of a score, like I already said, as a rule system and as a kind of temporal system to trigger certain events, certain movements, certain interactions also. And now we're kind of moving away from purely stage performances and going into the realm of um, um, participatory and insta, um, installation pieces. So I would like to first talk about very briefly about a piece called uh, Unity Switch. And that piece works in a way that we have participants, both audience and both um, performers, who are equipped with video glasses they're wearing over their eyes. So basically, all they see is a video screen. And below the, um, this um, headset, there's a small camera that can capture whatever you see. and um, Put it on the tier, on the on the screen in front of your eyes. The same happens um, with two microphones and a headset um, and a, uh, and headphones. So everything you hear is kind of mediated through, um, well, through technology, if you like. But in the original part, you just kind of see a mediated version of your surroundings. But as all the kind of all the video glasses and all the cameras are hooked up to one big switch that can reroute all the connections. Um, and we can see here in those charts that w as the piece goes on, the connections between all involved participants kind of cycles through. So what does it mean? It means at some point you look through the eyes of somebody else, somebody looks at or you see yourself being looked at from your opponent and all possible kinds of um, combinations. Here we see the, um, this, the kind of the fundamental setup. It's several rooms where people are sitting in front of each other on white tables, all equipped with the same headgear and um, executing different kind of um, 
different actions. So <clears throat> the main point maybe for our context here is how kind of the setting and the temporal structure of the piece and the score is used is it is um, is used kind of as a as a synchronization tool and not I mean of course we know synchronization for well maybe for for music performance and for dance but here it is used as a kind of complete synchronization tool between yourself and another body where you kind of use your hands and the actions that you execute to kind of become one with somebody else or to become one with the kind of um, mediated, technology mediated version of another person. So it's it really, in this case, the score is kind of like a table, so to say, with timings and um, cues and instructions for the light and for the video switching. And here it really goes in my understanding, at least in the direction of a kind of a kind of experimental test setting, where you, where it is, um, where it is about kind of trying to um, to learn something about yourself, about how you interact and how you um, perceive your own body or somebody else, and it's um, the it is it's becoming less and less a piece where you watch something, where you watch a performance or where you look at somebody or listen to somebody doing something, but it's more a setting that allows you um, an experience. And that experience has a lot to do with how you relate to this, to this um, system or to those rules that you are, um, that you are being exposed to. And that's it's already the, kind of transition line to the last chapter I want to talk about in all briefness, um, which already was apparent in um, what we've done or what, what I've been talking about before. And um, I now want to go into one piece that is actually called Control, which is maybe the furthest away from a, from a music performance um, in the traditional sense. It again uses a uses VR um, kind of VR glasses and um, wireless um, video cameras, and you see on the left four people who are um, going through a, a big building, and what they see and what they hear is again being transmissioned somewhere else, and in this case, it's being transmissioned to the control rooms where somebody tells you what to do within that setting. And then 30 minutes later, you go from the main setting into the control room and now you are in charge to actually control somebody else. And that is the new, the new um, people arriving within the setting. And in a third stage, you kind of have a kind of complete overview over everything that is happening. So it is again, a system that is created that is, um, not being introduced to anybody who's participating. So it's um, the people need to find out about that as they go along. So they enter that setting without knowing anything what will happen to them. And maybe that's very abstract. Let me give you a short um, um, accept video clip so, so that you're prepared. What you'll see is you look through the eyes of one person within the main setting and you hear another person, a woman, telling that person what to do. So you hear the voice from the control room, you look through the eyes of a person in the main setting and in front of you, you see a performer. Okay, follow him. Stop. 
go to the sofa. Hide behind the sofa. Crouch down. What is he doing now? Staring at me. So you can um, you can probably sense that this um, that it also already that it kind of recreates a kind of video game like um, control setup um, in a actual physical space. And I would like to play one short and last video clip um, that is from the same from the same work control. To take a bite out of the peach? It doesn't seem so good, but I could try it. Do you want me to? Do you want to? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> okay. But I feel like you're the one deciding here. You feel that? Yeah. Why would you feel that? Because. I have no clue what's going on. It seems like you do. Ugh, that's really greasy. Maybe I, I'll take a bite. All right, so um, maybe we can see that as the <clears throat> as the last example clip. So in that, we kind of um, already feel or can see how the in that case also the audience members are trying to make sense of a system or kind of to relate to a system that they are being exposed to and um and i would like to come to the summary and to to sum up what maybe unifies the um the different pieces that i've been talking about or the strategies behind it and so for one, it is the the interplay or the connection or the relation between the different entities within um, within those works. And it's well, the composer here is first, it does not necessarily have to be that way. But there's a there's a, what I'm interested in is to to think about a the interplay between the composer, the performer, the conductor, the audience, and the computer, and to treat all those things kind of as one setting where these relationships are being examined and questions or also transformed or, um, yeah, um, or examined. So it's really the, the idea of creating a setting to also to try to find out something. So some of those pieces are not so much a, um, a presentation of something, but re really rather a test setting in that sense that they try to try to um, try to learn uh, or try to find out something um, about about how it feels. So it's you know, kind of try to find out something also on the um, on the sensory, on the sensual and on the emotional side. So you're kind of being, it's like kind of construction where, where the, where the score serves as a, as a hierarchical um, rule system. And then the question is, how do I relate to that? How do I relate to that as an audience member? Or maybe also how do I, re, um, how's my relation to the, to the performer being placed within that setting? And how is the relation between the performer and the system that he's being um, placed in? So there are different forms of um, of control orders, and um, it's obviously a kind of um, those have very ambiguous connotations. Uh, I hope that also this kind of spectrum came um, across slightly. So there's kind of it can go from empowerment or giving the the flexibility and the tools into the hand of the performers but it can also mean that they are actually um, subject to control um, themselves so this kind of jumping back and forth between those connotations or those perspectives is something that um, that i'm after within these pieces and um it's 
in several of those pieces, I try to make these these relations um, perceivable, like on a on a personal level, and on the other hand, try to expose some of the rules within the piece. So very often, there's a kind of switch where a form um, before created rules, settings, or relations are then being broken apart again or being looked at. So <clears throat> it's, and that maybe is the complete summary of what I'm trying to do, is creating systems with certain rules and relations and then exposing those systems in order for us to kind of reflect those mechanisms and how they um, make us feel and how they make us interact and perceive the world. And that is what I wanted to say. Thank you for your attention.